In this video, we are going to review Foxconn H61 MXCS motherboard. This board is released under the gaming series, but it is not supported. It does not support overclocking. These are the prime features of this motherboard, where you can see it supports it, it supports the latest Intel Core i series processor. It is powered by Intel H61 chipset. It has USB 3.0 support. It is compatible with Windows 7 and some additional options here like smart charger, PCI 3.0, and the maximum RAM it support is 1.1333 uh, megahertz, which is a dual DDR3 RAM. While some additional features are available on the back side that offers you to smartly monitor and control the temperature of your processor, these are the additional features like there is an internal utility that allow you to manage the CPU uh, CPU temperature. Also, there is a fan control utility inside it. There is a smart boot menu options available and there is a super BIOS uh, protect uh, feature also available that protect your BIOS from different uh, problem arising after overclocking or due to power failure. The specification of this board is it uh, it uh, has a LGA1155 socket which supports Intel IV Bridge and Sandy Bridge processor. The maximum RAM you can put on this board is 16 GB while it has 4 SATA ports and for audio it offers you 5.1 HDA channel. You can see the layout of this board here. This is a micro ATX port which is uh, ideal for HTPC and mini PC. Now this board uh, comes with LGA1155 socket that allow you to use Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge processor which are first and second generation Intel, Intel Core i series CPU. While there is no update available on Hashwell processor while uh, as uh, the new upcoming third generation processor will be having an entirely different socket so you cannot use that on this. Uh, right now on this board we are having only two RAM slots which is with support up to 16 GB memory and uh, the maximum RAM megahertz that work on this is 1333. So you have to buy RAM wisely when you are going for a, a higher series like when you are going for 8 GB RAM stick you must check out the megahertz there. Don't go for uh, 1600 that will not work on this. Additional stuff uh, here is uh, there is a single PCI 3.0 slot only so you can only use a single graphic card this. And uh, there are 4 SATA ports. These are SATA 2 ports uh, which are 3 GBPS port where you can uh, where you can use 4 different hard drive but uh, in many new motherboard we are having 6 GBPS SATA port that offers us more data transfer speed and better uh, performance. So in terms of micro ATX board, uh, this can be a bit slow when you are uh, going for a STPC and streaming really high-end videos. Additional connector you can see on the board is a PCIe slot which can be used for some old cards and uh, there is a front audio connector available here. There is a speaker connector. While uh, you can see two uh, green slots which are for front USB. Now for using a system fan on this, there are only two uh, connectors available among which uh, one is for the CPU and second is uh, the additional one. If you want to add more, more fan in your case, you have to rely on the PSU. Below lies the ATX uh, power, power connector. While uh, this board is powered by H61 chipset, which is uh, good for a mid-range system while uh, Compared to the price of this board, if you add 30% more on that, you can easily get a Z77 chipset which is the latest one. Still, th this board is not bad enough for uh, gaming and for media centers, uh, media center PC. While you add a good amount of RAM, a single graphic card will do, will do the job. When we talk about gaming, the another important thing that comes uh, in the same line is overclocking because that allows you to give you, get you more performance on HD gaming. This board or can offer you a mid-range gaming output but it is not meant for overclocking there are no system tweaking utilities available in the bio. The H61 chipset on this board is uh, ideal for day-to-day -day work for entertainment and for, and for mid-range gaming. Due to LGA1155 socket you get option to use the most latest processor on this motherboard like the Sandy Bridge CPU or IV Bridge. While for uh, connectivity you have a USB 3.0 support Compared also. Compared to H61 chipset, uh, I will simply prefer to go with Z77 which is always uh, better in terms of more performance and better power management. Still, if you are looking for a uh, portable mo motherboard for an uh, for uh, mid-range performance for day-to-day -day work, then this board can be useful to some extent. Uh, as you can clearly see the design which is very basic here, you can see the capacitors. Those are uh, very uh, low range capacitor means uh, as I said that uh, for overclocking or for high end performance this board can be limited in terms of output but still we can uh, use it for web surfing easily for office application for watching videos and etc etc. In terms of connectivity you can see we have all connectors uh, placed on the back side where you get out old uh, PSU port also that is used for keyboard and mouse there is a single VGA port and HDMI on it. 
while there are a set of four USB 2.0 port and two USB 3.0 on the back side. This is a gigabit LAN port and a five channel audio audio jack. So this board is somehow designed uh, idea designed as in the terms of HTPC where you look for better resolution and good audio output. So as you can see, uh, for in terms of connectivity, this board has uh, ample of options available. <coughs> While for BIOS, uh, this board comes with a single BIOS only. Many new motherboard are coming with dual BIOS protection due to which, uh, if something happens uh, to a, uh, a BIOS chip, the the settings are saved in uh, the second one. And this uh, board is not not having any kind of dual BIOS setup. But there are some additional option available in the BIOS. Now I am not having the right hardware to turn this machine on and to and to show you the BIOS but still I can give you a small uh, update on that. Inside the BIOS you can find a set of uh, unique utility like F Center where you can get some additional options uh, where to control the CPU configuration and fan. It has a smart BIOS type of thing which lock the BIOS setting and does not allow anyone to change the settings and another thing it offer you is uh, a smart power LED control through which when you connect the motherboard to, to a system, the front power LED uh, is used as an error indicator. There are a set of error code available like if it blinks two time or three time, there is some kind of issue with the uh, RAM and CPU. You have to use, you have to find that codes in the motherboard manual. Foxconn H61MXCS is a mid-range uh, motherboard that gives you support for using the latest processor, high RAM and a single graphic card also. So there are no chances of using SLI or Crossfire. While this, can, this board can be ideal for an HTPC according to me, if you are looking for a reasonable cost effective media, uh, media server type of system, this board can act as a good, uh, good, good uh, hardware in that. Also uh, for gaming it gives you a mid-range performance, there are an ample of videos on YouTube that show you the gaming output of this motherboard with a graphic card. So you can check that on uh, YouTube while uh, other things of this board is that uh, it is also quite fine for using uh, in day-to-day -day application like for web surfing, using for office application, video editing, etc. But it is recommended that you must use a high amount of RAM on this so that you, you do not get any performance issue. Uh, it is also very uh, complicated to find this board on online vendors. I tried to search the price in India of this board. I am not able to find this board on any online website. Uh, like uh, Flipkart or Snapdeal while uh, some international sellers are selling this for $62, $62 that shows that this is a budget board. The positive aspect of a Foxconn S61 MXCS is that it gives you support for the la uh, latest Intel Core i series processor. It offers a smart BIOS feature and uh, it comes with onboard HDMI and Pi audio chan or Pi channel audio output which are good for home theater system. While the negative aspect of this board are it has a single PCI slot and uh, the, the PCB which is used on this board is a bit less durable and there is no dual BIOS options available. That's all for now. For more review, tutorial, news and updates on latest technology visit techrena.in. Thank you. Have a nice day.